Good morning. My name is Julian Pickens, and I'm the teacher for the Sun Lakes United Methodist Church on this day, September the 27th of 2020. The name of our lesson today is Faith, Salvation, and Righteousness. And the purpose of the lesson is to explore how our speech strengthens our faith and how our faith enables uh, our speech. And the focal pa uh, passage uh, from Romans 10, 5 through 13 will be read by Marilyn Pickens, my wife. And she will also present the prayer list for our Sunday school class. Before Marilyn comes to give our Bible lesson, I would like for you to join me in a prayer that uh, applies to this lesson today, if you would join me. Sometimes, oh God, we struggle with knowing exactly what we believe. We believe in Jesus, but sometimes we don't know what to believe about Jesus. Help us to know what to affirm about our faith. Other times, we find doubts that crowd trust out of our hearts. Enable us to find ways to continue to trust, even when trouble, grief, or inner conflicts cause us to doubt. Give us the words to say when we want to express our faith. We thank you that you love us in spite of our doubts, and intellectual questions. In Jesus' name we pray and ask your forgiveness for our sins. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Marilyn, if you would come and uh, give us our scripture lesson and also our prayer list. Thank you. Good morning. Here we are on the last Sunday of September <laughs> and you're probably all wondering where the year went and um, and there's a little bit of it left, but here we are. Um, just to let you know, we had two birthdays uh, this week, and uh, Howard's was on Monday, and I think Judy's, Judy Yaryan was on Wednesday. So um, speaking of Howard Jenny, um, he is continuing to struggle with his walking, and um, uh, he did have a shot in his shoulder on Monday, which uh, Phyllis said was just good for two days and then he got more pain back actually. So that is not really good, but uh, <clears throat> he did have a, an epidural in his back and that was, um, that was, has given him relief. So that's a good thing. And um, Phyllis said that on his birthday, a neighbor brought over cupcakes and she had made a cake. So. They had a lot of cake at their house on, on Howard's birthday. Um, they are getting home health care three days a week, and um, that seems to be working well for them, and that's something they really need. Um, as far as Michael goes, he had his liver surgery and the ablation, and that's all complete, and now they're just awaiting to see if there are any, any possible uh, next steps. They're going to uh, evaluate his situation. So that takes care of the Jennies and um, wanted to let you know that Helene Rusk has written a beautiful obituary for Dale and um, it, they, they will be having a small family, private family service. Um, that I've put in my letter, my uh, newsletter this week, uh, how to see that obituary, but just briefly tell you that it is in the Arizona Republic and it also um, is available at BuellerMortuary.com and just go to obituaries and uh, uh, scroll down to G. Dale Rusk and you'll see a beautiful picture and write up on Dale. Uh, Janet Sims is so excited because she had not seen Jerry for two and a half months and he has now been transferred to Encompass in Mesa and uh, Judy, um, Ju Janet, excuse me, will have visiting hours each day and uh, she can also have meals with him there. So they're excited and I'm hopeful and I think we all need to pray that that will give him a quicker recovery. Um, Mary Sievert, we, we visit, had a nice visit with her. She's all packed and organized and is moving Wednesday 
Um, and I, I don't know if it's a two-day move or a three-day move, but anyway, she is moving at the end of the week um, into their beautiful new home. And uh, Scott has struggled with strength and fatigue, and so his health has been limited in this, but, but um, I think they're both really happy and excited about the prospect of moving into that new home. And I spoke to Karen Stock, and uh, she's still having tests for her breast cancer. Um, they still have not, they won't determine exactly what the treatment will be until they um, evaluate exactly what her situation is first. So we'll bring you up to date with more information on that as we get it. And I also wanted to let you know that Brenda Kramer, uh, her hysterectomy went very well. She's home. Um, David is continuing to do physical therapy and uh, um, we just keep them among others in our prayers. Let me see, I think I have talked about everybody that I have updated news on. If any of you have um, information on anybody, I always appreciate getting it. Get your phone calls or your emails and, and just let me know what's going on. I think we all like to hear about it. So. Next, I will read the scripture, and for today, our lesson is Faith, Salvation, and Righteousness. The scripture is Romans 10, chapters 5 to 13, and excuse me, 5 to, yeah, 5 to, 5 to 13. Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law. The person who does these things will live by them, but the righteousness that comes from faith talks like this. Don't say in your heart who will go up into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will go down into the region below, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you have faith that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Trusting with a heart leads to the righteousness, and confessing with the mouth leads to salvation. The scripture says, all who have faith in him won't be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord is Lord of all, who gives richly to all who call on him. All who call on the Lord's name will be saved. Thank you, Marilyn, for the scripture reading and also bringing us up to date on members of our Sunday school class. This lesson today, uh, as I studied it from the pupil's book and also the teacher's book, brought to my mind that uh, the reading from Romans, uh, there are words in that whole reading that I think uh, we need to take a look at. And that will be part of our uh, discussion this morning. Uh, but before we get into it, <coughs> for those of you who are uh, come from a Methodist background and are involved in the Methodist Church, you know that there was a man by the name of John Wesley who was one of the founding uh, pastors of the uh, Methodist Church in England. And uh, he, he was looked at uh, all through his life as a, as a pastor and as a minister to be one who was close to God. And uh, he tells the story that uh, he was sailing, in the, this was in the 1800s, on a ship uh, coming from England to the U.S. And uh, he was very fearful of being on a ship. Uh, and so he uh, was faced with some doubts and fears that he had when they encountered a storm. But he noticed that uh, while he was afraid and fearful, there were a group of Moravians who sailed on the ship and they did not seem to display any fear that he felt on the inside. He later went to one of their leaders and talked with him. And the leader suggested that uh, they had faith in the, uh, in the crew and the captain of the ship, and it was their faith also came from God. And so um, 
he questioned a friend of his, uh, John Wesley then questioned a friend of his, Peter uh, Bowler, uh, how, he, how Peter could preach about faith and, uh, and John was wondering how he could uh, have the faith that his friend Peter had. Bowler told him, and this was his reply, that uh, preach faith until you have it, and then because you have it, you will preach faith. Um, and that is a practice that um, John Wesley used from that point on. But we also can practice gratitude, we can practice uh, in order to feel grateful, we can practice dealing with our fears because we can overcome our fears. And if we show kindness, we can cult cultivate big, uh, feelings of love. These feelings that are expressed in, in the passage that Marilyn read, uh, for those of us who were raised by uh, Christian parents and parents that uh, were uh, reading the Bible daily, uh, we have come from a different background. There are many in, that I've come in contact with in my lifetime of ministry that know nothing of the type of background that I experienced. And so, for your understanding, my father was a Baptist preacher, my mother was a very dedicated Christian, and every morning at the breakfast table they read from the scripture. They had prayer, and that was the beginning of our day every day and uh, attending church and going to Sunday school was a vital part of my upbringing and so I, I say that to say that with many of the people that I've come in contact with in recent years they have had no background in, in any Christianity or any belief in God and uh, so their background is very different. The passage that Marilyn read from Romans 10 talks in terms of the law. Now, in order to understand what the uh, what Peter or P Paul was saying when he talked about the law, uh, need to understand that for them, the law was uh, those Ten Commandments that had been passed down by God to Moses written in stone and it was from those commandments that the Jewish tradition started that this was God's way of saying to them do these things or don't do these things uh, so that you can have uh, communion with me through prayer and meditation and uh, so that was the beginning but the law was uh, in all the Old Testament times until the uh, birth of Jesus and then his life, uh, that was the turning point for us as Christians. Because up until that time, the Ten Commandments and the uh, parts of those commandments that the Jewish people had uh, extracted and, uh, and made even broader, these were what they thought were what God wanted to, them to do in order to live by. And so it's talking in the passage that Marilyn read about righteousness. This is a term that we see in the Old Testament, but we also see it in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, righteousness had to do with keeping the law, every letter of the law, and um, in so doing, they would be able to have a communion relationship with God. If they disobeyed one of the commandments, then the punishment would, could be severe uh, as far as God was concerned. Uh, so he, in order for them to regain a relationship with him, they needed to admit to their wrongdoing and then they needed to give a sacrifice. And that sacrifice could put them back in communion with God. When Jesus came in the New Testament, uh, this righteousness was somewhat different. And this is what Paul is getting at in the scripture that we have today. The righteousness today is that Jesus will, ask, will forgive us if we ask for forgiveness from him. And it is through his grace 
that uh, we can be forgiven. We don't have to uh, go out and kill a calf in order to give a sacrifice. Rather, we can recognize our wrongdoing and ask for forgiveness. And we're promised in God's word that he will forgive us when we ask. So righteousness in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament is God's way of having ongoing continued communion with us. There's another word that is used there in the passage, and that is faith. Uh, usually we think of it, especially if it comes from the Bible, faith is a religious term. And it is in our practice today, not only in religious life, but also in personal life. It's a belief in something and a trust or a trust in some person. Uh, we practice uh, this faith in our relationships with our spouse, with our families. Uh, we practice faith in a different way, but a similar way with our uh, boss at work and with our friends in our community. So faith is a part of our relationship with other people. They use another term, uh, Paul does in, in the scripture reading, he talks in terms of, in, don't, say, don't say these things in your heart. Now, in today's society, we think of heart as being that part of our anatomy that gives us life and pumps blood throughout our body. This is not the heart that uh, Paul is referring to, but rather he's referring to um, kind of a Bible psychology. It's the central and unifying organ uh, that is a part of. And this heart, he ties in with uh, past because we are all creatures of, of our past and habits that are, might have started years ago, but they are a part of us. It also involves memories that we have, memories of, and experiences with other people uh, it also can involve memories and experiences in a religious sense with God, our God's uh, people in, in our lives. So a part of man throughout uh, this whole time is when he has contact with the divine. And uh, that is when we see that term heart in the Bible, especially the New Testament. That is what they're referring to. Uh, the man's total being uh, and ties in with you know how he can have a relationship with God. Another term that comes out in the passage today is confession. Uh, confession is an aspect of worship of God. Uh, man acknowledges his act which separates him from God. And this ties in with another term that is used in, in the passage from Romans, and that is sin. Sin is defined uh, theologically as anything that separates us from God. It might be uh, it might it might be work, or it might be uh, pleasure, or it, it can be any any action on our part uh, that separates us from having that close relationship with God. And uh, so confession takes place when we recognize the sin that we have committed and ask God to forgive us for that. And uh, his, his um, Bible, or the verses from his Bible tell us that he is faithful and just to forgive us of that. So, but in order for his forgiveness to take place, there needs to be a confession on our part. And to use another term uh, in this passage that Marilyn read, and that is saved. Now this is a term that we as Christians use very often. Uh, it ties in with the term salvation. And Paul speaks of salvation as being a gift from God uh, by him sending his only son to come to this world and live and die on this earth. And it's as a result of Jesus' death that we're able to 
have a relationship with God without having to go through the Old Testament aspect of uh, killing the fatty calf, etc. Because Jesus' death serves as that breach between God and ourselves. When we commit a sin that separates us from God, we can ask for forgiveness through Jesus Christ, and He's faithful and just to forgive us. So, a person who makes a profession of faith uh, can then be saved from a physical and uh, but a spiritual death. And so, uh, we believe as Christians that there is a place called heaven where our spirit can go and be with God forever. Uh, and there's also a place called hell that uh, if we don't have that belief system that our spirit can go there. So these are terms that these verses that Marilyn raised uh, can apply to us today. And they, they do apply to us today. And down through the years there have been much that has been written uh, in numerous uh, religious books, literature, with regard to how we can draw closer to God, how we can be able to be a part of uh, His community. And so, as a result of that, we have in our Methodist Church uh, different creeds that are, have been written and printed in the back of our hymnal. And uh, one of those creeds that is special to me I would like to share uh, with us today because it is uh, it, it has the words that I believe and help my belief so I'm going to ask that in our closing prayer that we uh, hear these words from the Nicene Creed I believe in one God the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of the sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you again for joining us in our Sunday school lesson and uh, look forward to the time where we can be together in person uh, and enjoy the interactions of our class. Thank you God for your blessings upon us as a people of the Sun Lakes United Methodist Church and continue to lead and guide us. These things we ask in your name. Amen.